Hi, my name is Michael Sullivan. I'm a full-time instructor of mathematics and statistics at Joliet Junior College in Joliet, Illinois. Throughout this course, you're going to be hearing me present key concepts in my classroom lectures, as well as other videos. Hi, my name is George Woodbury. I'm a full-time math and statistics instructor at College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California. You'll be hearing my voice in some concept videos as well as the video solutions to the examples. Both George and I hope you enjoy this innovative and interactive approach to introductory statistics. Please take advantage of all the features we're about to show you in this video. So welcome to Interactive Statistics. On the left side of the screen, you'll notice the navigation bar. The navigation bar is custom and may not look exactly as you see on your screen because the navigation bar can be changed by your instructor. That said, I want to point out a few features of the navigation bar. Most notably, Course Home. And at Course Home, what you'll notice at the top is an announcements bar. Below that, you'll see a course calendar. The course calendar shows each week of your course and may show things such as due dates. In this blue screen, you'll notice there's a list of what to work on next. That's a great way to navigate directly to your assignments. And then there are other features on the course homepage as well. Again, this can be customized by your instructor. Here you'll notice the guided notebook. I'll talk more about the guided notebook later, but the guided notebook can either be downloaded as a PDF by chapter, as a Word document by chapter, or if your instructor has set it up this way, can be purchased directly already printed out from your bookstore. The course itself, the textbook if you will, is located under Interactive Reading Assignments. You'll notice that each interactive reading assignment is going to have a chapter associated with it. All you need to do is click on the chapter you wish to navigate to, and then each section is broken out. So chapter four, for example, has four sections in it, along with an end of chapter review. This little icon that you notice here means that your instructor made that particular item hidden so you wouldn't see this. However, every section also has additional section exercises that your instructor may assign to you. Let's go ahead and look at what a typical section is going to look like. I'm going to click section 4.1 and for my course section 4.1 has the interactive assignment along with end of section homework. The interactive assignment is essentially your textbook. Because this product is exclusively online, your textbook itself is also online. So to read section 4.1 you're going to click 4.1 interactive assignment. This takes you into the interactive assignment. Click continue assignment. So on the screen is a typical interactive assignment. Across the top what you'll notice are tabs and each tab can be clicked to take you directly to the content contained within the tab. I'm going to start with preparing for section 4.1 and the preparing for sections essentially represent a list of topics that you need to understand in order to be successful in the upcoming section. So for example, in this section, you need to understand the topic of the mean. We always have review material that you can click on to refresh your memory. This is a hyperlink that you would click on and then a pop-up appears that reviews the topic of the mean. After reviewing the topic, you're expected to work a Math Excel problem that assesses your understanding of the material. These problems are tied to your gradebook. As you complete problems, in the upper right hand corner, you'll notice that it's going to keep a running tab of how many points you've earned out of the number of points available in this particular section. This particular section has 15 points. You can use this drop down menu to see the problems that are associated with the homework assignment for this particular reading assessment. How do you maneuver within a reading assignment? Well, under the preparing for section 4.1 tab, these bullet points at the bottom represent how many pages or slides there are within that particular tab. 
So preparing for section 4.1 has four slides associated with it. You can move within a tab by clicking on any bullet item within the tab or using these arrows on the left and right side of the screen. If I click the left arrow, I move back a slide. If I click the right arrow, I move forward a slide. If you're using a tablet, you can use your finger to literally scroll and move from page to page. So here's another preparing for topic. Now I'm in the third preparing for topic. And the fourth preparing for topic, this particular topic does not have an exercise associated with it. Notice that the arrow on the right is now blue. That indicates that if you click on it, you're going to move to the next tab within the reading assignment. On the left is a gray arrow indicating that you're going to stay within that particular tab. So I'm now going to go to the introduction tab. Every introduction tab is going to give a list of the learning objectives within this section. The learning objectives are hyperlinked to that particular concept. And so if I want to go directly to compute and interpret the linear correlation coefficient, I simply click on that link and it takes me directly to that objective. I'm going back to the introduction tab. And what you'll notice here is that there's a video available to you. Many of the sections are going to open with a video such as this, which is a Go Animate video. And the Go Animate video is meant to tie the content that we've learned in the past with where we're going within this particular section. In chapters two and three, we examined data in which a single variable. You'll notice that every video is going to be closed captioned with English subtitles. So if you want to utilize them, feel free. Now the overriding philosophy behind the interactive assignment is for you to read a little, to watch a little, and to do a little. So on this page we have you reading a little. In this chapter we discussed graphical and numerical methods for describing bivariate data. Now recall I mentioned to you that we have this guided notebook. The expectation is that as you work your way through the interactive assignment you're going to utilize this guided notebook to take notes from your reading. So for example here we're giving you the definition of bivariate data and in the guided notebook we ask you to define bivariate data. So you would write the definition down here in your own words. The idea is that as you complete the guided notebook you end up creating a textbook in your own words that you can use as a resource throughout the course. I'm now in objective one where we give the definition of a scatter diagram and then we present an example. Now because this is an online textbook, the examples are structured differently than they would in a physical text, meaning they're interactive and engaging. So here we lay out the problem and then we give the data table. This icon right here allows you to open the data table up in a program called StatCrunch. By using StatCrunch, you're going to be able to follow us in doing the example yourself. After we lay out the problem, we show the approach, and then we show the solution. Notice over here on the right is a caution video. These caution videos are also Go Animate videos that are closed captioned, and they're meant to alert you to some of the pitfalls in any statistical procedures or statistical concepts. Now what really makes this product unique is the fact that we're able to present to you solutions in video form. There are a wide variety of approaches that can be used to solve any statistics problem. We present you with up to four video solutions. This is a video where we work example one by hand. Here we're working a video solution using the TI-84 graphing calculator, video solution using StatCrunch, and video solution using Excel. Your instructor will tell you which of the video solutions you should watch. So for example in my class I use StatCrunch so my students are expected to always watch the StatCrunch video solutions. In addition to providing video solutions we also provide a technology step-by-step. -step. If you click on this we show you how to get a scatter diagram using the TI-8384 graphing calculator, StatCrunch, 
and Excel. Another unique feature of this interactive assignment is that we have the ability to assess your understanding of the previous content right away. So here we have an example of an Excel exercise that assesses your understanding of what we just presented on scatter diagrams. We have two different types of assessment problems within the interactive assignment. Some are going to be RA style exercises. The RA stands for reading assessment. Many of the reading assessment exercises are only going to allow you a single attempt. When you have a single attempt on an RA exercise, you will notice it by either a pop-up that says, hey, you only have one attempt on this problem, make sure you are confident in your result. The other tip that you're going to have to tell you you have one attempt is that it's going to say final check in the bottom right where you give your response. Some RA problems will allow you multiple attempts. You'll see that because it would just say check down here. Here's another RA style exercise. It says final check, so I'm only gonna get one attempt. Here we're giving you the definition of positively and negatively associated. These are statistically sound definitions, but as always in quantitative disciplines, the definitions tend to feel a little bit dense. So what we do in the classroom typically is say, well, here's what this really means. In this text, we do that through the In Other Words feature. If you click the In Other Words feature, a Go Animate video appears where we tell you what positively and negatively associated means in everyday language. And now we have another exercise. This one is not an RA style exercise. You can tell that because it just says check answer down here rather than final check. Here we're giving you the definition of the linear correlation coefficient. Because these are complicated ideas, we tend to include a video with that particular content. So if you click this video icon, a video will pop up explaining this formula to you. So you're not only relying on the reading, we also have a video format that's going to explain the formula to you. Another type of video that exists in the interactive assignment is a so-called lightboard video. The lightboard videos are done by me and they are used to explain statistical concepts to you. Pay particular attention to these types of videos as they lay out very important statistical concepts that you need to understand. So I mentioned that with the interactive assignment, we ask you to read a little, do a little, and watch a little. Do a little includes the exercises that we have you work on, but they also include activities that involve statistical applets. So here we're asking you to use this applet to answer these parts A through E. The applets are going to be pop-ups. So I click the applet link and the applet pops up. My recommendation to you is that when you're working with the applets, shrink the applet down and then shrink down the screen that contains your interactive assignment so that you can place these side by side. By doing it this way, it's easier to work your way through the applet. And notice that the words on the applet adjust so that they fit on the screen. So part A says, if data currently exists in the scatter diagram, click Reset. So I click Reset to delete the data. Create a scatter diagram of 12 to 15 observations. So all I have to do is click on the applet and the observations appear in the scatter diagram. Then it says, click Show. So I click Show and the correlation coefficient appears. Move some observations from the scatter diagram and note how the correlation coefficient changes. So I simply left click on a point and drag it around the Cartesian plane and you can see how the correlation coefficient changes. So the applet exercises are there so that you can learn statistical concepts in an active fashion. It's always easier to understand concepts when you experience the material as opposed to somebody simply telling you what the results are. So work through these activities in a diligent manner so that you understand the statistical concepts. To make sure you understand the concepts from the activities, we usually follow all the activities up with a video that is going to further explain the concepts. 
And then here is a summary of the properties of the linear correlation coefficient that you should have learned from the activity and the video. And then we have assessment exercises to assess your understanding of those concepts. You may have noticed that with the exercises in the upper right hand corner is a button that says question help. If you click on question help, you'll notice that there's a help me solve this. This basically is a procedure where the problem itself is broken down into steps and you're asked intermediate questions as you go along. It's kind of like a tutoring session between a computer and you, the, the student. There's view an example. View an example shows a complete example of how to solve a particular problem. And then there's tech help. The problems that can be solved using technology are going to have this tech help button. If you click on it, a pop-up appears and we show you the technology step-by-step -step using the TI-83, StatCrunch, and Excel. So that's a quality resource to utilize when you're working your way through problems and you need some additional help. Finally, when you come to the end of an interactive assignment, it's going to say this concludes the interactive reading assignment. Click Save. You would click Save in the upper right hand corner to save your work and make sure that it's being housed in the gradebook. Hi, this is George again, and I'm going to walk you through the end of chapter materials. These are accessible both through the interactive reading assignments menu and the e-text menu. I'm going to show you how to get there through the e-text menu. Click on e-text, pick the chapter you're interested in, say it was chapter four, and then click on chapter four review. The end of chapter review has four sections listed across the top. The chapter review, the review exercises, the chapter test, and informed decision. The chapter review begins with a mind map. If you haven't used a mind map before, it's a great way to study for an exam. You can view the video walkthrough of the mind map, and you can also download it through this link. On the second page, we find the vocabulary. Click on any term, and its definition will show up in a pop-up window. On the third screen, we find formulas for that chapter. And on the fourth screen, we have a listing of the objectives from that chapter, the examples that are from the section relating to that objective, and problems in the review exercises that relate to that objective. Let's move to the second section, review exercises. These are standard MyLab style problems that allow you to practice in preparation for an exam. As we see across the bottom of the screen in this chapter, there are 18 of these exercises. Let's move to the next section, chapter test. These are problems for you to work on to prepare for the exam. You can download any data in the problem using the data link. Let's scroll down to take a look at the problem. This one has four parts. And if we click on show answer and scroll down, we'll see the answer to the problem. Just like the examples in the section, there are video solutions by hand using the TI-84 calculator, using StackCrunch, and using Microsoft Excel. In this section, there are nine pages of problems. Finally, let's move to the last section, informed decision. These are projects that you can work on to reinforce the topics and expand on the topics presented in this chapter. Now we'll finish up by taking a look at tools for success and some of the valuable features built into that. On the left-hand menu, click on tools for success. First, follow the link to tables and formulas. Here you'll have a list of the formulas presented in our product as well as some useful tables. If you want all the tables associated with the book, you can find those under view the tables and lines and click on tables. If we scroll down to the StatCrunch section, the StatCrunch technology step-by-step -step is very useful. Click on that. And here you'll find step-by-step -step instructions for many StatCrunch procedures. The tools for success are very powerful and I'd encourage you to click around and find what will help you.